We're here, it's fight week and it all starts today. This is the media workout and it's taking place at the magnificent Gleason's Gym here in Brooklyn, New York. A lot of people thought this wouldn't happen, it does happen. It begins the countdown to Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia and it all starts right here today on the Design Boxing Show. We had great fights with them, no doubt. We need a fight. Hey, we're good fighters, let's fight. Live on DAZN Worldwide, April 20th, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. These two have been going back and forth since the amateur days. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. Let's make the fight happen now. This one is going to be a grudge match. Set to ignite. Devin the Dream Haney, living the dream. Multiple world champion, undefeated. I am the man. It's time for me to show the world how great I really am. Ryan Garcia, lightning fast, explosive, unmissable, going all in. This is the year I shot the world. A world championship is on the line, but only one can wear the crown. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation. I'm telling you, it's special. This one counts. Live on DAZN Worldwide, April 20th. You want some real fight? You can fight me. If you have a fight in New York and it's scheduled in New York, then it's only right you come down to Gleason's Gym, one of the greatest old school gyms in the world. And it's adorned by so many fantastic fighters over the world that have become world champions. And it's the place now that it's own boxing show for the media worker, Adi Odipo, the Latin snake, Sergio Mora, Chris Mannix. Gents, we are here. And I have to be honest with you, I didn't think we'll get here. But we are here. Ryan Garcia is behind us with Derek James hitting the pads. And it's good to be here as well because it has the feel of a big fight week, Sergio. It definitely does. And yeah, we're worried that Ryan Garcia wasn't going to make it here, but we're here. And you know what? It's a big fight feel here. It's yeah. everyone's, everyone's here. The, uh, the reporters here, the excitement's here. Barclays, Santa, Brooklyn. It doesn't get bigger than this. Now it's time for both these guys to climb in the ring. And it's going to be explosive. Someone's getting knocked out. I don't think it was the distance. Yeah, everyone's here, and everyone has lots of questions because this fight has been much discussed for a variety of reasons over the last couple of months. Ryan Garcia, very active on social media, has caused people to wonder, was this fight going to move forward? Were we going to get to April 20th? But both these guys are here in New York. Both these guys are days away. So, at the very least, it sure looks like we're going to get them in the ring. I I've been wanting to speak to you, Chris, about what we've seen from Ryan in the last couple of weeks. And get your honest take on what you have seen, because me and you have spoken about it. I think, you know, I was on your podcast about a month ago, and I said, look, this fight wouldn't happen. It maybe shouldn't happen as well. A lot of people around Ryan's team have said, no, this is part of the PR. Ryan is doing it, and he's selling the fight. What's your honest take on it? Well, look, Ryan is no stranger to battling through chaos. Mm. If you remember his last fight against Oscar Duarte, he spent the entire fight week feuding with his promoters. Yeah. Like, wasn't speaking to Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins. It was the guys of, he's speaking to now, by the way. All is well, by yeah. the way, between <laughs> Ryan, Oscar, and Bernard. So he is accustomed to dealing with outside distractions. These distractions, though, feel like they are new when it comes to Ryan Garcia. He has the appearance at times of unraveling on social media. That's caused people in his camp a lot of concern over the last couple of months. The public face of all this is, look, it's just one big elaborate troll, and I'm sure some of it is, but... Some of the other stuff he's been saying, some of the remarks he's been making, some of the accusations he has been throwing out there. It's some serious stuff that he's been doing. So this is one of the more bizarre things that I've ever seen in any fight promotion that I've been covering. One thing I will say, Sergio, a lot of people have accused him of not training. He's been partying. I'm looking at a guy now he looks in great shape. In fantastic shape. He looks bigger. He looks more, more muscular. They're snapping his punch. I've always liked Derek James, and I like the fact that, you know, he, he's, he's working with that right hand. He's going to need a right hand. Mm. There's going to be a fencing match between two brilliant jabbers that have a great jab. Devin Haney, probably uh, better, but faster and more powerful is going to be uh, Ryan Garcia. So it's going to be game plan. Who takes a better shot as well? This is, th these are intangibles that are so interesting if you know what you're watching with boxing because this is a type of fight where Haney can be controlling the action, can be winning the rounds, but one punch changes it, and one punch is what Ryan Garcia has, that left hook or that jab. There's no doubt about that. I mean, Bill Haney has labeled Ryan Garcia's left hook the goodnight Irene, that being his finishing <laughs> shot, and uh, that's an apt one because we have seen Ryan throw that left hook and finish guys off repeatedly in his career, upstairs against Francisco Pianetta, downstairs against Luke Campbell. He is 
relentless with that weapon. One of the questions I have, though, we'll get an answer for that probably in the next couple of minutes, is as we sit here on Wednesday, is Ryan Garcia on weight? This is a 140-pound world title fight, and Let's we're going to get the answer to that question right now. We'll bring in Ryan Garcia. Step right in here, Ryan. You know, Ryan looks on weight. Guys, they were talking about, Ryan, they were talking about you and whether you're on weight. You look in fantastic shape, Ryan. I mean, I don't, I don't listen to these fucking motherfuckers anymore, dude. Everybody's some fucking hater, dude. Look at me, motherfucker. I, I passed all the drug tests. You guys are fuck. You guys hate the truth. That's the fact. I hate the truth. Look, it, it's right in front of your face. How the fuck I'm going to miss weight? Motherfuckers are bums, bro. Bums. Ryan, aside from that, look, apologize for the language as well. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm fine. a little turned up right now. That, that is turned up. Ryan, obviously, look, there's been a lot going on with you in the last couple of weeks. Uh, some people say, is Ryan okay? What, what is Ryan going nah, through? I, Ultimately, I'll tell you're good to go. No, no, RG has been mentally evaluated by every physician, therapist. I've had to jump through hurdles to prove I don't do drugs. I pass every test. I'm just a motherfucker on a mission. If y'all if y'all seen what I seen, y'all would not be the same, but it, it don't matter. I'm still here, I'm strong, and I'm ready to destroy this motherfucker. So what happened when you got to New York? You posted some stuff of maybe having to take some kind of mental test. Did you have to jump through another hoop when you got here? Yeah, I got mentally evaluated on a Zoom call by the uh, Nevada uh, Commission. I mean, sorry, the NYC Commission. And uh, I passed with flying colors. And then they said, all your tests have came out perfect. You have no drugs in your system. You're perfectly fine. How do you see this fight going, man? Do you think it was I'm going to kill him. I don't care what happens in this ring. If, if he ain't out on his fucking, on his face, face first, then I did something wrong. If I got to fucking elbow that motherfucker, break his shoulder or something, I'm going to do it. I'm dead ass. Second fight. If I got to bite both of his ears off, I am. You look fired up. And I like this. I don't mind seeing a Ryan like this. This is, this is good to see. Uh, second fight with Derek James. You're getting comfortable now with your new trainer? Oh, yeah. You see our work? Yep. You can't deny that either. I'm looking, my technique's better, my hands are up, the chin is down. What y'all got to say now? I, I, see you throwing more right, I see you throwing more right hands. That's, that's going to be a key. Yeah, but right what, what, everybody's like, oh, his technique, blah, 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 where's it at? Y'all can't say that now, so what's next? Oh, see, always some shit. It's always some shit. I might take, I, hands are up, footwork's there. What now? See? That's what you know, I thought. Only, only you know what goes on behind the scenes. Only you know. Yeah the work you're putting in during camp. But if you were someone on the outside, right. kind of watching the stuff you're posting, the stuff you're talking about, which again, is important stuff that you're talking yeah. about, but if you were on the outside watching, what would you think? Um, I would think he understands marketing at the highest degree. He understands how to go viral in this generation. And he broke the code and he breaks it every day. I do it every day. I don't take a day off. I wake up, post something because it doesn't matter. Nothing. All this is just noise, bro. I, t I do another post. Oh, that's crazy. I do another post. Oh, that's crazy. No, that's crazy. Or, oh, he's okay now. Like, bro. So, so is it just a big sell? Yeah, it's, an, it's, no, it, it's important things that I'm dead ass serious mm. about. But again, if I, I, I'm also in the middle of a promotion of a fight. So shit, if it sells, it sells. But at the end of the day, I know what I'm doing. All right, let's talk about the fight. You've been asking for this fight and wanting this fight for years. You versus Devin Haney. It's you in another big fight as well, which we've got to applaud you because a lot of people are not taking these big fights. What do you make of Devin Haney as an opponent? He just, a, I, don't even, I don't even see him. Mm. I don't see him. I don't know who he is. I don't care who he is. It's blank to me. I see one thing, eat, destroy, leave no crumbs, boom, face first. I've never seen this side of you, man. I mean, I this this is a like a chip on your shoulder, no, a little I, mean, I, a little I, I got something. a little bitter. What I'm happened here? What changed you? The shit that I've been posting about. That everybody thinks I'm lying, bro. No, I'm not. Why would I act like this if I was lying? I'm dead ass serious. I seen some weird shit, and it broke me, and I'm like, oh fuck. I got. And then you want to tell everybody? I was like, man, what if people think you're crazy? Nah, fuck it. For the kids. Wow, and I just went in, and I dived into it. How difficult though is it, Ryan, to to be? Posting and thinking about that, that and concentrating on that, the biggest fight of your career. A divorce, this, that. I have so much going on in my life and I'm still here. You've never seen this type. This is, me that's mental. That's mental strain. Motherfuckers couldn't even move, get out their bed. I'm right here training. I tell you, I'm going to destroy this motherfucker. What get the, you've seen Devin over the last couple of fights. He had a tough fight against Lomachenko, but came out of the, with a decision there. He shut out Regis Progray. What gives you that confidence that you have? Kind of what it takes oh, to beat him. You can't compare Regis to me. Come on, man. That's disrespectful. No, I'm, well, Lomachenko, I mean, he's a good fighter. Lomachenko beat him. They robbed him. Close fight. Stop it, man. Close fight. Lomachenko. Look, I don't like this. Like, 
Yeah. Bro, this one say people don't know boxing, bro. You can't win jab, baby body shot. But like he Lomachenko was pressuring him, hitting him with combinations, mixing it up. And you're gonna tell me Devin won? Nah, that shit was paid off for sure. Yeah, every right. time you do that little that little shadow box in there, you're throwing your right hand. Is that yeah. something you've been 100 percent working on now in, with, with Derek James? Don't be surprised if he gets laid out with a straight right. Do not be that's all I gotta tell you. Do not be like face first. Not <laughs> this would on paper be obviously the biggest win of your career, but would it be kind of the biggest triumph of your career as well in the sense yes. that you have been, people are skeptical yeah. of you coming into this fight, more so than they've been of you coming into any fight, including the one you had against Tank. Yeah, no, this is the most important fight of my career, and I will not leave here without the victory. Is the belt important? Yeah, yeah, it's to solidify like that, yeah, Ryan's a champion now. Now you really have nothing to say. You've never been a champion? Well, now I'm a champion. What next? I will say I'm here this. to just uh, every narrative of myself, destroy it, destroy it, destroy it. I will say this, Ryan. You are no. We were talking about this a moment ago. You're no stranger dealing with any kind of outside and succeeding it. And we were yeah. just talking about in the last fight, you were at war with your two promoters, the guy that was just in the ring with you yeah, moments ago, yeah, exactly. and you still scored a knockout in that fight. I'm no, it's no. It's no. It's not nothing new to me, bro. I've always had to do. I've always had. To perform under crazy circumstances like if it's not my promoter hate on me it's something in my personal life if it ain't that it's just like i'm used to this this is just like this is a walk in the park for me like okay yeah yeah you guys don't know shit it's like whatever keep talking you know what? I, I wanted to i wanted to be here and, and actually see you face to face close up i think you look great thank you bro. i think you look great and i think your mind is okay and i think you're ready on saturday and that's what i wanted to make sure that you're a good one god bless you ryan god thank bless you bless, man that was interesting. Uh, Ryan well, Garcia. let me tell you something. Go on, uh, talk to me. Normally, I would say he's a little bit too wiry, but that was passion speaking. It's passion. Uh, that was passion speaking. You know, whenever you, you're dealing with a fighter, you're dealing with, with, with emotion, you're dealing with uh, adrenaline, you know, it, it, it comes in the, in, in, in the places you don't expect. But I like that energy. I like what he's saying. It could be ignorance. It could be ignorance. I know a lot of people watching are going to say, you know what, that's, that's false bravado. But as a fighter, I have to respect what I just witnessed. I have to respect what I've just seen. Now, can he pan out? Is he going to do it? These are the things that we're all here to watch. Now, if he can back up the talk, he's back. Yeah, if he can if he channel comes up short, all of if that he comes energy up short, in one way, then he's back. But, Chris, it, it was an interesting conversation. Chris. The question of can Ryan Garcia win is an easy one to answer. Yes, of course he can win. He is one of the most powerful fighters in these lower weight classes and has some of the best hand speed of anyone in any weight class. But, Sergio, the energy, it was high, that's for sure. And if this were kind of a three-round bar fight, I might agree with you. But over a 12-round uh, prize fight for a world championship, you need a lot, especially he's yeah. not going up against a nobody here. You know, I admire the confidence that Ryan Garcia has coming into this fight. He knows exactly what he's getting in with, with Devin Haney, having fought him six times in the amateur ranks. But, look, De Devin fought well against Lomachenko. Devin shut out Regis Progray. Devin is on the top five, top ten in most people's pound-for-pound -pound list. He's going up against an elite guy, and I think Ryan's going to have to show something special in this fight. Yeah, and Sergio, you know more than both myself and Mannix having fought for a while title, how mentally strong and just one track minded you need to be come Saturday and I think we saw from Ryan there that, that head's in a lot of different places it, it needs all, to be in one it all depends how he channels that energy I mean it, it comes across as manic a little a little yeah. manic the yeah. way he's acting erratic but if you could channel that in a positive way and I've seen plenty of fighters I mean Floyd Mayweather Jr. who's one of his mentors is one of the experts at doing that he knew how to channel that he could be in a nightclub on Monday and, and be fighting for the, the biggest, baddest guys in, on Saturday. He was able to channel that. Ryan Garcia has a little bit of that. Now, can he do it all the way to the end? Because he does lose focus. And that, that's where the chip comes in. That's where he kind of... I think he was talking to me, by the way, when he was saying a lot of people... Uh, uh, I, th I think so. Uh, he he kind of gave you a bit of a side eye. He, he did. Your... And it's okay. It's okay because <laughs> I, I, I stick to what I said. Now, is he going to be able to... To, to, to practice what he preaches. That's what I want to see. Sergio, the, the subject of focus is an important one because, no, you don't expect fighters to lock themselves in a room for eight weeks and just train and that's it. They're not robots, for sure. But I, I think you can speak to focus as well as anyone because, look, the greatest triumph of your career was against Vernon Forrest. I think you'd be the first to agree you were not as focused going into that rematch and 
I'm guessing that affected well, you. It was overconfidence. It was complacency. It was me winning the world title against a four-time world champion when I was an underdog, four to one. No one gave me a chance. I proved them wrong. But I didn't take him serious the second time around. And that's those are the vibes he, Ryan Garcia is giving a lot of people. He's not giving Devin Haney credit for everything he's accomplished. His last seven fights, Devin Haney has fought champion after former champion as a champion. I, Hall of I, I, I think he's doing that vocally. I think deep down, I think he's got a smart team around him. Derek James would have him drilled in as to how good Devin he Haney better. is. I, I don't believe... And if what he said about uh, he didn't look good against Loma, don't compare me to Regis you don't believe him, You don't believe what he's saying? No, I, I don't. Oh. I don't. I honestly don't. Chris? I almost start to wonder I do. if it's part of a big sell. I don't. I, I tend to believe a lot of what he's saying. Same really? like, I, I do. Same I tend here. to believe. And look, maybe that manifests itself in the greatest performance of Ryan Garcia's career. That is completely possible. The talent is within him. But... The way he's talking about approaching this fight, going out, ripping his head off, knocking him down, throwing elbows, biting. Yes, some of that is a sell. Bring it up Mike Tyson here in New York City. That's <laughs> something of a sell. But y you got to be disciplined to win a fight against Devin Haney. This is going to be the most, the toughest fight of Ryan Garcia's career. How big do you think he looked here? Uh, can we guess? Wait, what are you thinking? He looked like a junior middleweight. Yeah. I think he looked uh, 154, looked 160. Heavy. I'm not a great judge of that, but... Look, we've seen Ryan Garcia for the last six years fighting on the zone. Getting down to 140, that's, there's a slimness, there's a speltness that's required. Now, maybe he can get there in the next couple of days. The weigh-in is not until Friday, but it, it feels like a, a heavy lift to me. Well, yeah. I can actually vouch for that because he has a frame. He has white shoulders. He's pretty tall. He filled it out nicely, muscular. So, yeah, I, I think he, he's going to be right on point. Yeah, uh, Melikuzyev in the ring now, a bit of shadow boxing as well. Can I ask you, uh, uh, honestly, do fighters want to do this? Uh, do they what? want to take time out of their training camp to come down? Look, they've got to do, they have to do this. They have to do this. It's in the contract. Did you it's ever like doing this? Did you ever like doing a media workout? Uh, of course not. Because I most love talking to cameras. Yeah, no, no, I did any not. Any time, right? Any no, time no, because you're cutting weight. You have cotton mouth. You're, you're, you're not in the best of mood. You're hungry. The last thing you want to keep is regurgitating the same old things, the same answers to every single person that asks you. So, no, you don't want to do this. But if you want to get paid and you want to be on the big stage under the bright lights, you better learn how to be a showman. But this is an interesting fight on the undercard. Bektamir Melikuziev, who most people remember as the guy that Gabe Rosado knocked out a I, few years ago. I was just about ago. to say that I he, still have that image, and he's moved he's on it. since then, but I still have that thought. He now. has moved on. He did redeem himself. He did beat Gabe Rosado in that rematch, and now he has kind of reestablished himself as a top 10 guy in the 168-pound division. This is something of a showcase opportunity for Beck the Bully, who has often found himself on smaller cards, not in this type of profile moment, I think he's going to get a great chance to show himself here. Yeah, I mean, look, the 168 division, obviously currently ruled by a certain Canelo Alvarez who takes on Jaime Minguez. Everyone, though, is trying to become that, that guy next guy. That guy against Diego Pacheco. <laughs> that is the fight I've been calling for and calling for and calling for for the better part of the last few months. Both guys ranked at least in the top ten. Pacheco ranked in the top five by three of the four sanctioning bodies. I want to see that. That is rock'em, sock'em robot or in Southern that guy, California. Or that guy versus Berlanga. Either, I, way. either one. Either one, right? I'm not quite sure if Eddie Hearn will take the Pacheco offer for uh, Melikuziev just yet. Uh, the great Bernard Hopkins has just hopped in to the ring. The legend that is. Bernard, Bernard, thank you so much for joining us, Bernard. Right here. Right there, right there Bernard, good? right there. Uh, Bernard, <laughs> you, you've you been very honest. What was it? Okay, there you are. Good to see you. Good to see you as well, Bernard. You've Sorry. been very honest with uh, Ryan Garcia um, over the last few years. You've had your ups and downs with Ryan as well. You guys look very good in there, good spirited. Where is Ryan mentally? Honestly, where is Ryan right now? Fight mode. Fight mode? He's in fight mode right now. And, and, and you know what? I mean, most people, not most, majority of people are talking about um, the Instagram, what he's saying, the antics and stuff like that. But I, look, look at that as the jab in, in, in the boxing business. It's a distraction. A jab is normally used as, as a distraction. Right now, what's a distraction for others to talk about, which is us and others, which is good, I guess, certain point, conversation to a certain point. But I believe, he didn't tell me this, but I believe that he's doing this so successfully because since I've been here, Everyone that stuck a phone or a microphone in my face asked me about the social media. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And I seen something the other day. Well, I think it was yesterday, yesterday where I believe for the first time, Devin Haney showed that he was kind of what, wrong, what was wrong that? about it. What was that? The push, the slap, or whatever, mm, right? Mm. So before it was calm, the dad did all the hollering and screaming. Now he's reacting. 
I mean, does anybody know anything about the history of my era? I gotta talk about myself for a couple of minutes. <laughs> I did and played the best head game that a man can play on planet Earth. So when I see these things, I'm looking at people like, they looking at me like, do you ain't hear or see what he said on Instagram? And I ain't, wait, wait, so, I don't so, go so run You, think it's, you think it's all part of a troll? You think he's just playing mind games of everything? No, I, I, I think majority of it, 90% of it, I believe he believes. But I also believe he's getting a bang for two bucks here. Okay. He has people thinking that he's crazy, which he's not. He has people thinking that he's not focused and he's not prepared physically or mentally for battle. Which he is. Which he is. And I believe no underestimating Devin Haley or his achievements because they are who he is. Ex undisputed middleweight champion. I mean, undisputed champion. Right way, undisputed before. And yep. then became champion. But also, Ryan understands that he can take more risk with Devin Haley and chances with Devin Haley in the shootout. Question though. Then with anybody else that he fought up to now. The, the question though I would ask though about the discipline that he's shown during this camp. Because you can stomp on a flag in Puerto Rico on a Tuesday and be back in the gym doing your thing the rest of the week preparing for a world title fight. You were down in Texas while Ryan Garcia has been training. Correct. Did you see the kind of discipline that you know you need to have to win at this level? Yes. I've seen the discipline, and not only that, i also seen something else. There's no secret. I'm just letting everybody think about what I'm ready to say now. What people put out there to the universe is not actually what they are and what they're doing behind closed doors. See, part of the technology, I can give you something that you think I'm giving you. Did you just call it the trick? But in the same, but in the same, but in the soda, but in the same token, I'm working my ass off at three or four in the morning. Where y'all thinking my gym time is five to eight, five to eight, or five to seven? See, again, this is all conversations that's going to be more tomorrow. But Saturday night. There are two guys that's going to go in that ring that have some experience from when they was young men. Now that they are grown men in a grown man sport called pro professional boxing, it starts now with me. It ain't no three and three and we break the tie because you cannot say that amateur commentating is pro commentating <laughs> and that that counts. You High school doesn't count for college and college don't count for real life. Lessons and Bernard, stories. Do you, do you think he is respecting what Devin Haney brings to the table? Because I get what you're saying. You can take more chances against a guy who's not a big puncher. But Devin Haney is also, by most accounts, a top 10 pound-for-pound -pound guy right now. Absolutely. Undisputed He's champ at 135, just wiped out Regis Prograde. Do you think he is, is going to be showing the appropriate amount of respect he needs to no. against a guy like Devin? No, I think that he respects Devin Haney. I think he respects him enough to know that even if you want to go back and dicker into the amateur career, they three and three. They three and three for a reason. But they also, they also understand that they're not the same fighters they was when they was in grade school. Now that they in pros, which means they had to go through college. And they succeeded in that in their careers. Ryan Garcia has one loss. And I hear people talking like he got five. And he lost to Tank Davis, which I believe that David Haney couldn't beat if he'd have fought Tank Davis tomorrow, today, or next, any other day. So I look at it like this. When Ryan Garcia win this fight, and it won't be easy and it won't be given, all that we're talking about right now become, of, become a conversation of did he or was he the best plan that we ever seen in boxing or the distraction in boxing, that whole conversation would be a whole new different soap opera of journalism. Because now you have to analyze what's been said, what's been done, 
and he wins after all this? Come on, please. It's over. But not, but not, but not. But you not. want to have young fighters start doing the same day? But I, I can Good never. Or bad. But not, I can never normally cut you off. But Melikuzev is there. He's waiting to get in the ring. He's just done his workout. So we have to. We have to hand that over to me. Well, well, let me ask you a question. I'm sorry. How many fights you got? Not as many as you, Bernard. Not as many as you. <laughs> I need one more minute. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of microphones out there for you, Tucker. Oh, my God. Good to see you, Be up. The GOAT. The executioner. The alien. The man. I believe we're going to bring Bektabir Melikuziev <laughs> I think into the mix. Bektabir Melikuziev, 168 pounder. Come over. Stepping in. Ready for his fight this weekend. Beck. Uh, we're going to bring a translator, translator as well. So Beck, this you, this feels like a big opportunity for you. Not not necessarily the fight itself, but to be on this stage at this point in your career. Для вас это большая сцена в этот раз, большой ринг. Как вы себя чувствуете? Ну, конечно, сам чувствую очень хорошо. Я поздравить это большой шоу. У меня, конечно, это шагом хорошо выступать надо и только I'm feeling great. That's a big step for me, and it's a big stage for me. So I feel great. You feel like you've, you know, we've talked about this a lot in the aftermath of the loss to Rosado. You got your your revenge in that fight. Do you feel like your career's back on track now? После того, как вы проиграли Гейб Розадо, вы чувствуете, что сейчас вы вернулись в нужное русло? Конечно, у меня у меня бой очень важный бой. Это я хочу, это еще лучший чемпионский бой хочу. Как быстро у меня хорошо будет. It's a very important fight for me, so I would like to show more and look better this fight. Beck, so many top 168 pounders in the world. Obviously Canelo, the main man, having all the belts, but so many other fantastic 168 pounders. How, how far away do you think you are from the very top? Uh, for этой весовой категории 168 паундов uh, есть Канело, но помимо Канело также есть много замечательных боксеров. Как вы чувствуете, как близко вы к самому верху в этой весовой категории? Без разницы, без разницы, кого дрался, я хочу. Это Канело или Морел, Бенавидес, everybody, я хочу просто большой бой, хочу. It doesn't matter for me if it's Canelo or Benavides or other guys. I just want to have the biggest fights. You're on a, a big fight here on, on Saturday on another big card as well. How exciting is it to be on a big card, pay-per-view, Barclays Center? How, how good does that feel? Как вы себя чувствуете боксировать на такой большой карте? Это pay-per-view, бой. Конечно, я чувствую хорошо большой бой. Это ринг показывает только яркие победы. Иншаллах, яркие победы хочу. И быстренько это большое шоу. Еще. I would like to win in a big fashion, so I feel great. So. What, what's, what's it like in your, your gym nowadays? You've got a lot of guys that are starting to succeed at a high level. You know, MJ was already yeah. a unified champion. I believe, is Giasoff your stablemate too? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Giasoff is there on the path to world championship. But dream off, world champion. Yeah, like, is, yeah. it, is it motivation with all those guys that are reaching the high level? Yeah, it's a Indio, California, Joel Diaz, Tono Diaz, это как один из семью, да, семью, Mexican guys, West Mexican guys, everybody, пенчи, мексиканские жюда, дружественные команда, Мишало, я тоже хочу чемпионский бой, это Мураджан Ахмадалиев чемпион, Исраил Мадриев был чемпион, был. Mm -hmm. We are all family in the gym. Those guys are champions, and I would like to be champion too. Beck, good luck on the weekend. Wait, I, I just have oh. one, one follow-up. So, you win this fight. How do you feel about fighting Diego Pacheco in your next fight? Yeah. <laughs>
Готовы ли вы боксировать с Диего Пачека? Да, я хочу. Вы готовы? Готовы? Right No, you understand you certain words. Try, you hear Joel Diaz, bit. you hear uh, River. Uh, uh, names. You understand names. I understand names. I understand, names. I understand passion. I know. I understand that he's in a comfortable place, and he looks great. He looks great. Yeah, and what I like about what, and it was a good question, Manix, about the gym that he's in. Mm -hmm. All different styles in that gym as in well. Mexicans, Americans. So he's learning. I think he came over with a very European style. And now you're watching him, and he looks like he's picking up different styles as well. And I think one thing to remember about that gym is that even though Beck has not reached the championship level, He's the big brother of that gym. When he got knocked out by Gabe Rosado, there were tears flowing mm. from members of that gym. M. Jack Medalia was in tears after watching him. So seeing Beck kind of, you know, dehumanized in a way really had an impact on the fighters in that gym. They are elated to see him bouncing back and put himself back on that championship path. And, you know, Sergio, you know, steel sharpens steel. Like, even if they're not sparring, even if they're not in the same weight class, when you see your stablemate, winning world championships or being on the doorstep of winning a world championship, you are motivated to do the same. No, absolutely. You get motivated uh, to train harder knowing that you're seeing what it takes. And look, you see it right here with Scrappy, which, with Scrappy Ramirez. Sees it with a former champion and Hiberto Surdo Ramirez right there. That that right there, break house boxing, what they're doing with Julian Chua as well. That's what you're talking about, Chris Mannix. Uh, uh, steel sharpening steel. And when you're on the professional level, the championship level, you need that. You need that My trainer used to call it the whippet, like the dogs chasing the whippet. You need that whippet, you know, to, to be chasing after something. And uh, I think that's that's what we're seeing with Beck the Bully. I asked him the question about how far away he is from that very top table. How far away do you think he is oh, from well, the look, very, with, very with, best in the division? With his amateur experience, he's a bronze medalist at the Olympics. Uh, they're moving him nicely. Uh, maybe one or two fights. I would love to see a fight between him and Diego Pacheco. I think the winner of that deserves a big fight. I think he's three or four fights away at least. Um, it's probably going to come down to him forcing a mandatory yeah. or something because nobody's going to voluntarily <laughs> take that type of assignment. And speaking of mandatories, guys with mandatory world title fights coming up, Scrappy Ramirez, 115-pound contender, interim title fight. Let me tell you something, Scrappy. This, I think, your fight is the best fight of the undercard. Um, And I give I you credit for I give you credit for taking this fight. We saw David Jimenez fight a little while ago, beat Ricardo Sandoval, who's a very good fighter. You are knocking down the door a potentially a world title shot over in Japan. This is a tough fight for you to take at this stage. Absolutely. So look, listen, I started boxing seven years ago, right? For the first time, my main goal was to become a world champion, right? I did the whole amateur thing just to get to where I'm at today, right? So now that I'm number one, I've been consistently and persistently changing chasing that world title opportunity you know i told them i'm not taking no uh step aside money you know but at the same time i can't wait for for the champion you know i gotta stay busy get my experience you know so they gave me uh this next opponent which i'm actually happy because he has an upset has a a, a a big amateur resume you know so it's tough on paper you know and i want the challenge so that turns me on you know what i like about you the most apart from Your, your hair, your looks, everything, the whole look about you. The fact you're busy. You're always busy. Last year, busy year for you as well. Is that almost to kind of get those boxing skills because you said you only started seven years ago? So you're learning all the time. Absolutely. But I told Oscar, I told Eric, my main goal is to get that belt and be as busy as possible. Four or five fights, you know. And I think as long as I have the belt, I'm capable of doing that. Like I said, man, I'm here for a good time and a long time. And staying busy is going to take... That's what I want. Hey, Scrappy, let me ask you something. There's going to be a time where you're going to have to fight Jimenez off you. He's not going to stop coming. Yeah, you're a brilliant boxer. You I'm know the angles. I'm for everything, sir. Um, I, I've seen every, I visualize every occasion, box up close, however he wants it. You know, I, he said I I'm not experienced. We going to see when it's time. You know, I've been in the ring with a lot of killers, you know. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this uh, challenge. You know, you're, just, sorry, 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 you're, you're, your stablemate, Zerto Ramirez, just a few weeks ago, won a world title at Cruiserweight and what I thought was the best performance of his professional career. As someone that works with him, like how much does that motivate you when you're in the gym? Iron sharpens iron. Yeah. You Would know you what it is? Just thing, yeah. Iron sharpens iron. So I seen him chase the dream. 
he failed, went back to the to the gym, fixed his mistakes, got locked in, and you saw what happens when you uh, overcome those challenges. You become world champions again, right? So that inspired me, and I'm on the same path. He's leading the way. So, hey, uh, shout out to my trainer as well, one of the youngest trainers in the world. Uh, and I think after Saturday night, he should be a uh, up there for a trainer of the year. I, I think that is certainly a possibility. I mean, Julian Chua, you know, kind of came out of nowhere in a way. Was training on a wild card, working under Freddie Roach. Now he's running Brickhouse Boxing. Well, let's be let's be honest. Nobody comes out of nowhere. You know, there's people putting in the work. They just yeah. don't know about it. Sure, right? for the public for, at for large. For example, I guess. for example, I'm one of those persons that people think. Well, where this cat come from? Well, listen, for the past seven years, I sacrificed a lot. I've been all into this, you know, and that's what it takes to get to this level. And getting here is easy. I tell people getting here is easy. Staying here is the hardest part about this, you know? So that's where we at. You know, we have a great team. I have a great fan base. I also have a lot of doubters and they motivate me to be here, you know, and yeah, we here, baby. <laughs> How good does it feel as well to be in a division, the Superflies, which is exciting now? Everyone's talking about the Superflies. Look at Strada versus Bam very, very soon. You're in this division. You're in that weight class. That must be exciting as well. It's super exciting, you know. And they, every time they mention the Super Flyweight division, it kind of hurt me. It bothers me because they don't put my name on, on in the conversation. Either they're avoiding me or uh, I'm not relevant. So that's a chip on my shoulder. And I'm okay with that because 420, we won't prove them again, you know? And listen, I've had good performance. I have great performance and I have bad performance, but I've learned I'm not stuck on, on the hype. I'm mentally focused, physically, you got to see it, yeah. you know? So Saturday night, I'm not looking at, at this dude like it's an easy work, it's not. You know, he has a lot of experience. He already fought for the world title. But guess what? It turns me it turns me on, man. I'm up for that challenge. This is what I want. Fight the best. To be the best, you got to fight the best. He's considered on one He's the best out of Co Costa Rica, so let's do it. And not not being in that conversation probably is as much about profile as it is your talent or your record. Like you have gotten some TV exposure, but this is a big chance in terms of profile. I mean, it's going to be a packed house at the Barclays Center, a massive pay-per-view. You see you smiling as you're thinking about that. that. Look, yeah. This, this hey, is one of those opportunities. You know what I do, right? Yeah. I, I'm not here to take part. I'm here to take over the show. So that's what I want. You know, I love the lights. I love the people. You know, I don't shy away from it. There's no pressure, you know. I've seen this. I'm not surprised. That's why I'm here. Do you enjoy this? Do you enjoy Fight Week, all the cameras? I enjoy the this. I chose this life. Yeah. I got it tatted. It's on my back. I really chose this life. You know, I'm happy with the life I live. It's not easy, but I chose it. Who do you think's better on the mic? Scrappy Ramirez or Bernard Hawkins? Scrappy. <laughs> Scrappy's got him. Hey, Scrappy's that's my OG, <laughs> you know. Listen, there's a lot of people in this game. It's hard to, like, trust, respect, you know. B-Hop, he's one of those persons. I respect him, you know, and he showed me, you know, he looks out for me, so I appreciate that, B-Hop. Scrappy, good luck on Saturday, my man. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Reba. Get your popcorn ready, Thank baby. You. Let's do it. <laughs> I like that. I like fighters that talk. I mean, we've been in this game a long time. He gives sometimes the fighters the mic and they don't want to say two words. Scrappy is the complete opposite. He wants to say as much as possible. If they didn't shut the interview down, he would have carried on. Hey, and look, I meant what I said. I think the Scrappy Ramirez, David Jimenez fight is the best fight on I the do. undercard. I think it's the most competitive fight on the undercard. Scrappy Ramirez, as he alluded to there, is next in line for the 115-pound title held by, held by Kazuta Ioka over in Japan. He doesn't want to wait, doesn't want to stay idly by. He was given this opportunity to fight on this April 20th card, but with opportunity comes risk, and Jimenez is a real challenge out there for him. If Scrappy Ramirez can put on the kind of show that we've seen him put on on lower profile stages, he is going to catapult himself right into the mix in the top 115 pounders. You know what, I, I don't agree with you that many times, but this is <laughs> going to be one of these fights where everyone needs to tune in. Jimenez is a very live dog. Scrappy's going to have to fight this man off. There's going to be a point where he's going to get rocked, he's going to get hurt, he's going to have to show another side of what he can do. Not only the flash and the talk and the boxing and the angles, I mean he has that all, but now he's going to have to show grit, he's going to have to show chin, he's going to probably have to scrape himself off the canvas. It's going to be that type of fight. Jimenez is no joke. He comes with a professional experience beating Sandoval and others, but he also have over 300 amateur fights, so he brings that pedigree. Scrappy didn't have that type of amateur pedigree, it's going to show up in the ring. The ring doesn't lie. Uh, Chris, let's talk about this man. It's been a while since we've seen him in the ring. Um, uh, you can speak to that. He's had management issues. 
We are going to see him now. That man is Charles Conwell. And I'm hearing he's going to be a 160-pounder, not 154, which we're used to seeing him. Yeah, Charles Conwell, a former U.S. Olympian who entered the pro ranks with some you know, pretty good hype around him. People thought he could quickly become a contender in that weight class. His career has been derailed by mostly management issues, some promotional issues. He has not fought since the end of 2022. So this will be his first fight in effectively a year and a half. And he signed with Golden Boy. This will be his first fight under the Golden Boy banner. And we know Golden Boy puts on a lot of shows. Yep. So I would expect him to keep Charles Conwell busy, whether it is at 154 or 160. Only he knows what weight class he wants to campaign at over the long term. But this is a guy that had a lot of potential when he came into the pro ranks, was slowed down some along the way, and now he's trying to get back on track. Yeah, it's a long gap though, isn't it, Sergio? It's nearly two years since we've seen him in the ring. That, that's a long, long time. Especially for a young fighter with, with so much prospect. But yeah, inactivity kills. But he has the type of style. He's very strong. You see he has sturdy shoulders, very muscular. So he brings that amateur pedigree. He brings that confidence. If he can stay busy and stay active, he's going to be a real player at 154. I mean, can you imagine a fight between him and Virgil Ortiz Jr.? They're, they're both shaped the same way. Ortiz has a 100% knockout ratio. This guy has good pop. That would be an excellent fight. But he has to work his way up to the top. And staying busy on this card is where he now starts. Now who's playing matchmaker? Hey, okay. I'm you're both right now. I need to find a match to make as well because you're both getting involved <laughs> in this. But look, I kind of speak to what you said as well there, Chris. I mean, Golden Boy put on so many shows. So if management issues are now to the side, there's no excuse why we don't see him in the ring once every three, four months. Oh, absolutely. I think that's Charles Conwell's plan as well. Nobody's been more frustrated over the last couple of years about the inactivity than Charles Conwell. So I would expect, assuming everything goes well on April 20th, we'll see him back again this summer, back again before the end of the year. I would expect to see a healthy serving of Charles Conwell in 2024. And not only that, but expect Golden Boy Promotions to match him toughly after this fight. They don't they don't play around over there with the matchmaking. So, you know, Conwell's in with a, with a fighter that he's supposed to beat on Saturday, but you can bet the very next fight is going to be somebody who's going to test him to the limit. Yeah, Charles Gonwell has finished his little workout. I think he's going to join us as well once he gets the gloves off. And look, it's just good to see him back. We've seen so many fighters have these management issues over the years, and it just stalls careers and takes their best years for him. He's lucky. He's a young fighter. He's got those years to come. But it is disappointing to see a young fighter who, again, unbeaten, so much prospect, so much talk about, have two years, two years nearly out the ring. This fight on Saturday, I want to talk about the main event just as Charles comes over. When you look at the 140-pound division, um, easily, I think, the deepest division in boxing right now. I haven't seen your rankings, Chris. I know your rankings sometimes can be controversial. Have you got Devin as number one in the division? There's nothing controversial. There's controversial. About about my yeah. rankings. Everybody agrees with everything I post at any given time. And no, I don't think there's anything <laughs> controversial about the 140-pound division. Devin Haney is the top dog right now at 140. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez yep. can make a case. There's no doubt about it. But Devin Haney, I think, was number one based on his performance in his last fight against Regis Proger. I thought I was number one as well. And we could bring in Charles Conwell. Charles, come in, Hanging brother. out over on the side. Andrew and Mike, good to see you again, Charles. Ben, feels like it's been a minute since we've yes. seen you in the ring. We were just talking about your layoff, if not fought, since the end of 2022. For people that kind of don't understand, where has Charles Conwell been? Coming out of the Olympics, you had some hype behind you. What has been going on in your career that stalled it to this point? Um, you know what? It was a lot of internal issues with my team, so I just had to gather a new team, start all over, and rebuild. And I feel like with this team right here I got, Golden Boy, we can push and become whatever we want to be. Yeah, and we expect a Golden Boy. Um, one thing to do is keep people active. How right, important sure. is that to you to, after not fighting since the end of 2022, to have a really active 2024? Oh, yeah, that's, that means everything to me. Like, I, I told them the same thing. I want to be as active as I can. I want to fight as much as I can. I'm making up for lost time. But like I said, I'm still hungry. I'm still the same fighter from before. I'm still... You know what I'm saying? I'm still Charles Conwell. Bad news is back in boxing. So we're planning a campaign at 154, 160. What's 154. 154 will be yeah. your plan moving forward. Yes, sir. Char Charles, this is a type of fight. You're in there pretty much with a veteran. Has been there with some names. This right. is a fight that could easily get out of hand if you don't if you don't really take him serious. Is this the type of fight where you want to go after him and, and make him feel like he doesn't belong, or you want to try to box and, and, and be smart? Uh, you know what? 
I really, I really want to get him out of there. You know what? I'm going to be smart about it. I'm not going to be in there and go and crash out and go do something that's unnecessary or that put me in harm's way. So I'm going to break him down and eventually I'm going to get him out of there. I know I, I know I am. I've seen all the people he fought in the past. He's fought people who fought for world titles and mm -hmm. had great opportunities after that. So I know to prove myself and show that I'm a levels above those guys, I got to go out there. And On do paper, he's the do. toughest challenge, I, I would say, in your career, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. He fought he fought some of the better, uh, best opponents that, um, in 154-pound division. So. I think so. How careful do you have to be? We hear ring rust all the time with fighters. And again, for yourself, Charles, it's nearly two years out the ring. How careful do you have to be as you approach this one? Okay. How careful do you have to be? Oh, you know what, man? I got I to gotta be um, real careful, man. It's boxing. Anything can happen in boxing. But I know how hard I prepare. I know what I can do in the ring. And I just know what I bring to the table. So I'm not really... I'm not going to say I'm worried about what he does. I'm worried about what I'm going to do and how I'm going to execute and how it's going to look doing it. So, What's I'm it been, been like, about. Charles, to watch the 154-pound division kind of take off over the last couple of years? Jermel Charlo collecting all those belts at 154 while well, you've had to watch kind of all that play out on the sidelines. Man, I just feel I just feel like everything happens at the right time. I think this is the right opportunity at the right time. So what happened back then doesn't really matter. I'm here now. I'm still number one in WBC, so I can, you know what I'm saying, get the mandatory shot. But... I'm not really worried about none of those guys. I know I'm the best in the division. Why was Golden Boy the right fit for you to sign with? Um, I, I think I really like Golden Boy because they come from a, a, back, a boxing background. They have, you know, two of their people who, who've been world champions, legends in the sport, not even world champions, but legends in the sport. So I think that really drew me toward those guys the most. Is it useful that they have a really popular 154-pounder in their stable named Virgil Ortiz that you could potentially match up with in the near future? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, I'm definitely keeping one eye on him, too. I'm definitely going to be tuned in next week when he fight. I'm tuned in. i have you know, I've been, I've been a student of the game. I'm a student of boxing. I'm a fan of boxing. So I watch boxing, so I definitely tuned in. Uh, that's somebody I definitely got my eyes on. Charles, final one. How good is it to be back, not just back in boxing, but back on a big card like this yeah. as well? Uh, man, it's feel great. This is the type of card I needed to come back on. Mm. This is one of the biggest cards of the year, maybe the biggest card of the year. So this is the card I need to spring back, spring, springboard my career back in the right where it needed to be. So I'm just, I'm excited, man. I'm just real excited. All right, well, we're excited about the main event. How do you see uh, Garcia Haney playing out? Oh man, I think that's fight right there is going. I think it's going to be competitive. I think it's going to be competitive for the first half. It just depends on what two guys show up for each fighter. I know Devin Haney's been real aggressive, so I don't know if that can if that's going to play in his favor. Or he's going to be strong enough to you not know, box. And I know no Ryan Garcia. You know, it's been a lot of stuff going on with social media with him. But man, he looked like he's in good spirit. They both got in good spirit. So hopefully, I'm just going to be a fan to watch. Indeed, Charles. Good luck on Saturday, brother. Yes, Thank sir. you very much. Good luck. You, good luck, Charles. Thank you. Yeah. We just had Melikuziev standing in between you two guys a few minutes ago. Charles Cormor looks as big as Melikuziev. I was going to say, Ryan looks bigger than both. <laughs> yeah. Like, more muscular anyway. It looks stronger. Yeah. He does. You know? No, no, no. When, when it comes to Charles, he has like a, like a linebacker frame. He has yeah. a wide, wide shoulders, very strong. He fights that way as well. I think he, he's a strong puncher. He's not a power puncher. With Ryan Garcia, he has that long, long lean, dense muscle, and he, mm. we, we know he's a power puncher. Yeah, and I remember covering Charles Conwell in Rio in 2016. I remember thinking, you know, that's a guy with a better pro style than an amateur style. He is short, compact, comes in. Uh, like you said, Sergio, he's not a one-punch knockout artist, but he is a strong puncher. I think if they can get him active, he can put himself right back in that world title picture pretty quickly. You know, I think it's fair to say this week's been about ups and downs between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. One thing it certainly has been, though, is beef. Beef. Not that kind of beef. This kind of beef. It's a beef. He's a you may have noticed that at DAZN, we like a good stare down. Whatever the fight, whatever the country, we love looking at people, looking at each other. Oh, look at this one. No. <laughs> and that's a real stare down. Sometimes the staring can get intense. Oh, there we go. Whoa. That's when the old beef comes out. Hey, you ain't messing with these bums now. And in the latest all-new 2024 installment of Beef, we have two intriguing main characters. Hey, I'm Ryan Garcia, and this is Disney Channel. And you're watching, no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Ryan Garcia. He's playing the part of the contender. Somebody with charisma, somebody who has looks. Ryan's coming up against the champ, Devin Haney. I'm taking you down, Ryan. And with some help from ring card girls, 
a throne, and yes, a real life horse. Our two young bulls squared off for their very own stare down. And of course, there was beef. Scram me up, I'll be so, it should be easy then, right? And I'll be it out of you security too. Like most beef, there is history here. But this beef is very rare. Ryan and Devin have known each other for most of their lives. Both these guys came up in the amateur ranks. They first shared an amateur ring when they were nine or 10 years old. We fought each other at every major tournament. You know, he won the early fights. I won the later fights. So tell me, were you friends back then? Yeah, we were friends a little bit. In February of 2020, Devin Haney, who had a belt at the time, climbed in the ring. They had some good-natured trash talk between each other. You gotta be me to become champ. I should champ. be champ, right? Be me to become champ. I, I, I'll get to you. I'll get to you. Just make it happen. I'll, I'll get to you. Make it happen. Let's get that going. Let's go. You never at any point in time thought that Devin and Ryan didn't like each other. I mean, I think Ryan is good for boxing. Um, he brings entertainment to the sport. I'm proud of him. I've known him since I was young, so to see him where he's at, you know, respect. So how did it get from that to this? You're not my friend, remember that. You're not my friend. Your dad's a pimp and he pimping you. Well, the answer is this face-off and a supporting cast of characters that love stirring the pot. Hi, I'm Bill Haney, Devin Haney's father, the best fighter in the world, and you might know me from the internet. Ah, Bill. Father, promoter, trainer. And in 2024, a wind-up merchant. Bill was so upset at that face-off, he took his grievances online. Team Garcia, I don't know what got into you the last time I saw you, but you better tell that muscle head, meat head, fresh on the scene, Barracuda, looking. Pops started name-calling. His name's not Barracuda, it's Gaines. Put some respect on his name. That was Gaines after being called Barracuda. Is he okay? No, he's not. He's going through a lot of stress. He's really hurt by that. He put his filthy paws on one of ours, and I had to call in Tank. I didn't want to do it. It's something that you don't do unless it's special. Is this real or not? Because the Barracuda, is he wasting his time? Sometimes it's fighter versus fighter. Hey, game. I think you but this time, it's camp versus camp. All this chaos from a tiny bit of name calling. That and all the other talk. Ryan Garcia has now endorsed a new product. Shea butter. Shea butter. Shea butter is a good lotion. I use the lotion. Ryan Garcia obviously uses the lotion. It's news to me that you can put it in your hair. Gun. I could fix it more, but like, and then I just add texture spray. Shea butter don't go in your hair, Ryan. What are you doing? Bill Haney is an entertainer. His vice, I guess, is going on Instagram and poking the bear. What is that sh thing you rolling? I didn't see you roll it on your face. And I think that Bill is a marketing genius. What he's doing is, is just hilarious. We're in this wild story of boxing, and the bigger the characters, the bigger the promotion, the better the narrative, and the bigger the fight. Bill's strategy? Wind up the guy who was popular on social media. Ah! I'd rather drink Coca Cola than prom. Do you plan out your social media strategy? I wait for him to tweet and delete, and I show up, and you know what happens from there. Do you think Devin should do the talking and not Bill? Yes, of course. Dude, you're a grown man. It's time you start acting like one. Ryan Garcia is a, is a TikToker, a YouTuber, he's an actor. We've seen him in you know commercials, you know, doing skits and stuff like that. You know what they say about you? They say you're an actor. Yeah, damn right. I know I act my ass off. You wanna see me improv right now? I'm a f actor. Give me a scene. Alright, I got it. Bill! It's Devin! 
He's not waking up. Bill, I'm serious. The, the scratch out the boxing bullshit. He's not waking up. F you. End scene. See, I'm an actor. He's right. So after months of buildup, one of boxing's strangest ever beefs gets settled in the ring. This drama is different because you have to kind of figure out what's real and what's not. The dissolution of their friendship has come on rather quickly. All I know is that for right now, it's real. Like they do not like each other. And given that the trash talk has covered everything from horses to hair product, we can expect one hell of a show on April 20th, live only on DAZN. Who doesn't like a little beef? Devin Haney is in the building. Uh, he came in with the biggest entourage I've ever seen as well. It was almost Floyd Mayweather-esque ah, in, in Vegas. Yeah, maybe yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. Yeah, a couple years away from that. Yeah, yeah, he's getting there, though. He is getting there. And look, he's getting there in terms of record as well. 31 fights, unbeaten, only 25 years of age. And sometimes, Chris, you have to look at the record. I mean, this guy has been fighting fantastic fighters for a long time now. And I still don't think he gets the respect he should get. No, he doesn't. Um, if you compare the resumes of Floyd Mayweather and Devin Haney at this stage of their career, mm. age 25, they are comparable resumes. Devin Haney, the former undisputed champion, now a belt holder at 140. The quality wins they have on their resume. Back then, Pretty Boy had those wins over Diego Corrales, controversial win over Jose Luis Castillo. Well, I mean... Devin's got a controversial win of his own against Vasily Lomachenko and a great win against Regis Program. I mean, what Devin has done up until this point is one of the better success stories yeah. that we have in boxing. He has, he has said he wants to face the best, and then he's done everything humanly possible to make that happen. It, no, he's definitely, he he's definitely followed the, the Floyd Mayweather playbook, the blueprint. Because this is the type of man that doesn't engage unless he has to engage. He follows everything off the jab. He's disciplined. He, he fights at range. I mean, he fights the absolute best. And he already has a, a championship resume. I mean, he has Vasily Lomachenko under his belt. Lenar is a three-division champion. Guys his age aren't fighting those type of fighters, you know. So a lot of credit for him doing that. Going to Australia back-to-back -to, -back to fight a champion in his, in his own country. Fighters don't do that. Devin Haney is doing exactly that, and that's the reason, pound for pound, he belongs where he is. Yeah, look, I, I agree. He's 100% a top 10 pound for pounder. And you can almost see him as well going to 147 soon. Mm -hmm. I think sooner rather than later. But there are so many fantastic 140 pound matchups that, providing he wins on Saturday, I think it's fair to say, and we can see it from his resume, he will fight anybody. Yeah, Subriel Matias is out there. He's going to return in June against Liam Paro. One thing Devin Haney said recently that was a new development for him was that he wants to become undisputed at 140. When wow. he moved up in weight to fight Regis Progre, he said, you know what? All the belts don't really matter that much to me. I want to be in the biggest fights. Well, he still wants to be in the biggest fights, but he has prioritized winning world titles. And his affiliation with Matchroom makes Subriel Matias fight very easy to make. You could perhaps lure Isak Cruz over. That's another terrific fight. And then maybe you get a collaboration with Top Rank to make a Teofimo Lopez fight at some point in 2025. So Devin Haney has put himself in position to not only make a pile of money, but to become accomplished as well. Yeah, you see the QR code on the screen right now. Make sure you scan that to be a part of what is going to be an incredible night of boxing on Saturday, not just the main event. We've seen Scrappy Marines versus David Jimenez. Um, it's going to be a good night of boxing as well, but this is the main man. This is the one that everyone's come to see, and he's enjoying himself now, and he's become very comfortable with this as well, the media side of things. A lot of fighters don't like doing it. He seems to like it. Seems to almost just lavish it up, doesn't he? And the demeanor is different. I mean, we've seen how... Ryan Garcia was with the with the press and with the cameras, and look at his demeanor. This is just total, you know, concentration and focus by a champion that's been there, done that. But yeah, to answer your question, Ade, the more you do this, is repetition. You get better and better at it. You know how to be media savvy. You know how to promote yourself. Some guys do it to the extreme with the with the with the tweets and everything. There's a man that does his talking in the ring, and most most people, most boxing fans, the the, the hardcore boxing fans. They, they love this approach better. Yeah, I think Devin, though, has always wanted this level of attention. You go back to 2019, he was a belt holder back then. I mean, he was a world champion at a very young age. He just never got that level of attention that other fighters, including Ryan Garcia, had over the last uh, you know four or five years. So I think Devin is, is sort of relishing 
this kind of opportunity. How important is this man? His father, trainer, Bill Haney. Obviously, he's spoken about the likes of Ben Davis and Lee Wiley, mm -hmm. what they do from England behind the scenes. But Bill Haney is obviously front and centre. Sergio, how important the role that Bill Haney plays in that camp? That man wears uh, multiple hats. You know, he's a father, yeah. he's a trainer, he's an advisor, he's a hype man. I mean, he's, he's the biggest <laughs> hype man in that crew right there. But I, I give so much respect to Bill Haney for what he did maneuvering Devin Haney from Mexico, getting him fights when he was 16, 17 years old, to taking him from trainer to trainer up, up in the Bay Area in California to Las Vegas, taking him to the absolute brilliant minds to pick off, pick and choose the the the. the pieces of wisdom from greatness and then move them forward. I mean, it's just brilliant. And every, a lot of fathers, trainer and father, should follow this game plan because he's the voice, but he doesn't really interfere with the training whenever it comes to a great trainer in the camp. No, it's not about Bill Haney. That's what he's always made clear. It's about Devin Haney. Devin is the boss. I remember a couple of fights ago, maybe three or four fights ago, Bill Haney effectively fired himself and said, if Devin wants to rehire me to be his trainer, yeah. I will accept that role. It's always <laughs> been about Bill Haney, who has never been uh, never been afraid to bring in other voices. You mentioned Ben Davidson and Lee Wiley, two men that are to this day still working with Devin Haney, to this day still helping him come up with a game plan for the fight. Bill Haney welcomes every and all piece of information that's out there that can make Devin Haney a better fighter. I think that's a credit to what he's done. Can I put you on the spot? Obviously, look, Devin has been heavily linked in and around the same time as Tiafima Lopez, Javante, Shakur, obviously, and Ryan Garcia. Where is Devin in that five? Is he right at the top? Where, where, where is Devin in that five guys that I've just mentioned? Again, these guys have been heavily linked for the last four or five years. I think skill-wise, uh, he's in the top two. It's between him and Teofimo, personally. That's what I think. I think stylistically, he would be a headache for a Tank Davis. Now, Tank Davis has dynamite in his fist. We've seen Haney be hurt at 135, so that's a different story. But skill-wise, he has the jab. He, has, he fights beautifully at range. He's a sniper. He doesn't take you know, too many risks. He knows how to follow a game plan to the end. So it's hard to beat that. It's hard to beat a man that comes with a game plan and strategy and follows it all the way to the end. He can't be swayed. He doesn't fight off passion. He fights off strategy. That's intelligence and the sweet science at its best. The only reason I put Devin Haney above Teofimo right now is that there's a style that Teofimo seems to have some trouble with, right? The Sandor Martin style, the Jermaine Ortiz style, when you have a mover. To this point, there really hasn't been a style that Devin Haney necessarily struggles with. Yes, it was a tough fight against Lomachenko, but I think that's more about Lomachenko being an all-time great than it is about a certain style that he fought. This man seems to be able to handle everything. You want to box him, he's going to outbox you like he did against George Cambosis a couple of times, and he did against Vasily Lomachenko. You want to try to pressure him, be physical with him, he will box circles around you, and he will put you down like he did against Regis Progre. So all the names you mentioned, Ade, I think Devin Haney is right there at the top. We can made, we've obviously made the comparisons with Floyd Mayweather a bit early. What Floyd did that was really good is made those weight jumps at the right time just to make sure the body's fresh. How long does he stay at 140 pounds? We're going to see him in a few moments. He's a very big 140 pounder. He's probably going to rehydrate on fight night to middleweight. That's just what <laughs> yes. he did the last time. He's just a big guy that, to his credit, is able to get down to his weight classes, doesn't miss weight, makes these weights, and is able to have these types of fights. But I, I think he can continue to make this weight for two or three more fights as long as they're big fights. But 147, all of a sudden, is a little more interesting on the matchroom side. Matchroom just signs Boots Ennis, who is a title holder at 147. Connor Ben is out there, presumably going to drop down to 147 at some point in the near future. Those are big money fights that could be available to Devin Haney sooner rather than later. And Sergio, you can be as good as you want to be. If you don't have dance partners, it doesn't matter. And you mentioned some of those names there. Devin Haney's got dance partners for the next two or three years at least. No, oh, man, I mean, I'm, the money he's making and the fights that he's taking, it's just the resume speaks for itself. It, he, he's piling up champion after champion, and he's not avoiding any names. That's the reason he's getting paid the big dollars that everyone wants. So credit to Devin Haney, credit to uh, Team Haney, but, yeah, this is a man that holds the reins, and he can pick and choose whoever he wants when he wants it. That's the type of leverage he holds. You know what I like about these media workouts? There's so many sort of superstars here. You never know who's going to come in the ring. I've been told that Bill Haney is going to join us now, and here he is. They are jumping through the ropes. <laughs> How you doing, sir? We just, we just finished singing your praises, Mr. We, we, Haney. We've been talking a lot about you, Bill. We've been talking a lot about you. Thank you, sir. Bill, another big fight week. Here we are again. Uh, you and your son are doing incredible things. How does this fight week 
compared to others? Well, I mean, it's, this is what I say amongst all the madness. It's one more fight towards for Devin and his quest to be on the Mount Rushmore boxing. This stuff might seem uh, a bit strange, but this is what Devin was born into. He, this is what he's meant to do. Um, he thrives in this element, and uh, we look forward to it. Fight week is uh, it's just a, a time of dress rehearsal because we've already prepared, and you would know about that, Sergio. You, if you've really had a great camp, then this is just uh, this is just dress rehearsal for no, us. We, we keep talking about how great uh, Ryan Garcia looks. His body looks a little bit more muscular, but we're going to size up Devin Haney. He's always been filling out that weight really nicely. At 135, he was big for that weight. 140, he looks great, too. So right now, when he comes here, he filled out just as nicely as uh, Ryan Garcia. Do you think size is going to be a difference here? Well, you know, it's not about his look. It's about dismantling that hook he got. You know what I'm saying? So oh, okay. for, us, bit, yeah. no, for us, for us, it's not, he, yeah, it's not about his look at all. I'm, he, he's always um, came in ready to go. Even in, in his loss, um, in his last loss with Tank, he was ready. I mean, physically, uh, and, and you can't expect anything else from Derek James, future Hall of Fame trainer, uh, trainer of the year, uh, who's, who will have a great game plan for Devin. But Devin is something special. I don't advise anyone, any coach, to talk like I talk unless you didn't put in the work. And you've learned it the way we learned it from the best in the game. This di you mentioned this is about business, about getting Devin Haney on the Mount Rushmore of boxing. But it does seem like this has gotten personal, maybe Absolutely. even more personal in the last couple of days. What happened there at the Empire State Building, the shove? We heard you say some things. Devin's going to kill him in the yeah. ring. Like, how much of that is rhetoric and how much of that is really real, real feelings of you? Well, Ryan Garcia is in our way right now. Um, you know what I mean? It was business and, and everyone has known. Uh, how professional we've been about the business. But Ryan Garcia has now turned it personal um, by uh, some of his uh, insin insinuations about us. And, um, yeah, it's personal. What but bothered you the, the end, most? What, what's end, uh, bothered you the most that he said? Uh, you know, that he's fooling the people, that he's not actually training or that, that he's not actually getting prepared for a fighter like Devin. There's no fighter on the planet that's going to face Devin and not and not be prepared and not be worried about it. He's very casual about it. And so on his back, he will be on April the 20th. How difficult or easy is it to make sure that Devon knows that, right? I mean, we're all guessing as to where Ryan's state of mind is. Obviously, Devon's responsibility is to kind of make sure that Ryan, I guess, is 100% focused on this. Yeah, well, I mean, to be to get to the Mount Rushmore of boxing, I mean, you have to be a constant professional. You have to constantly polish on your craft. I think at 25 years old, Devon being undisputed two division and now defending the crown, um, it's, it's cementing what he really is. And I say he's better than the best ever. Who is better than the best ever? Who is better than the best ever? I don't ever? think anybody can be better than, than the best ever, yes. Well, well listen, I'm, I'm here to announce this Devin the Dream Haney, and you're witnessing it. You're watching it. You're living in it. It only happens every so often. And, you, and Saturday night, April the 20th, is one more so step. He's like the Haley's Common. He comes around once every 100 years, a talent like Devin Haney. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The, 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 the antics of Ryan, how much of that do you think is to try to take Devin out of whatever game plan you're putting into this fight? Because it would strike me that you know a knockdown, dragout fight probably favors Ryan Garcia more than a disciplined boxing match that you guys have been winning over the last few years. Well, I mean, the way that it's been drummed up, I mean, let's just throw out the boxing. Ryan Garcia, let's meet in the middle of the ring and let's make it whatever kind of fight you want to make it. How about that? Is Devin going to walk out there to the middle of the ring Saturday and challenge him like that? Guaranteed. He walked out there on Lomachenko. And he, met, he, he walked met out there on Regis Program. 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 I mean, and that's the thing. They, they all say everything, but uh, they say it up until fight night. If Ryan Garcia is who he said he is, then let's meet in the center ring and let's decide this thing once and for all. Can, can you remove your, your trainer hat and your manager hat and promoter hat from a father's standpoint? Yes, how sir. proud are you of what Devin's achieved so far in boxing? I'm proud. I know that he's one of one. And that's and that's just the way it is. I mean, I told him you have you have a lot of monuments here in New York, New, New York City, but you only have one of one. And that's Devin the Dream Haney. And what we've accomplished and what we shall accomplish, inshallah, I mean, the world will see. You guys love the word handicap during your fight, handicap opponents of their best weapon. You've done that effectively over the last couple of fights, most recently taking that left hand away from Regis Progre. How challenging do you think it's going to be to handicap Ryan Garcia of his best weapon? Well, it's about teaching the people at the same time. I mean, everyone said that Devin was having a problem getting hit with a left hand. I think uh, the general consensus was that he couldn't get away from a left hand. So, I mean, we took that challenge and we showed them on, on, uh, in front of uh, our hometown crowd that if we don't want you to use your left hand, you won't. Uh, and that could be anyone. That could be Javante Davis. That could be Shakur Stevenson. I mean, they're all 
uh, uh, Matias, they're all one arm bandits when it comes to Devin. <laughs> you don't. You got to have two. You got to have two hands. You got to be able to have the distance inside, outside. Sergio will tell you this ain't easy. It ain't easy for nobody to come and talk the way I talk. But we've shown you the best jab in business, the best feet work, the best distance. He had a knockout of the year with Antonio Moran. I mean, you know, we're talking about Devin the Dream Haney, the like face I, of boxing. I say it all the time, Bill. Like uh, the only thing better than getting a, a big time knockout on the big stage is. Pitching a complete shutout. Absolutely. For Devin Haney to move up to 140 and challenge a fighter like Proger, who's a beast. I mean, this this guy had the power and everything. Shut him out on two of the judges' scorecards. I mean, to do that, that's impressive. So you're practicing what you preach. Well, I see that's impressive not only to the people, but it's also impressive at the bank. Because if you can pick <laughs> no, if you can pick up the money on December the 9th, you pitch a shutout, you're back here on April the 20th. <laughs> Indeed, he's been busy. He's given us a couple of fights every year, which not everyone does. Bill, thank you very much. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you, Kings. Brother. Thank you, my Appreciate man. you guys. Thanks, Bill. All right. Here you go. Hey, you know, we said, um, what did we say? We said Bernard Hopkins, Scrappy Ramirez, Bill Haney. The and best now you got to add that man to Bill the mix when it comes to a microphone in his mouth. Yeah, hey, fantastic. He is fantastic. But I asked him that question as a father. He must be super proud. Has to I be. I mean, he has to be, right? Has what his be. son's Look, doing is incredible. You no, know, no, just being a part of this journey from the very beginning, traveling to those bar rooms in Mexico with your son, taking those kind of risks early in your career, trying to navigate him through the pitfalls of boxing. Sergio, you know them well. All the, the different you know business side of this that makes it so problematic. Uh, it, it really has to make a father proud to have a son who's 25 years old in this position and seems to be doing things the right way at all times. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm a father as well, not only a former champion, and I'm proud when my son colors something and stays within the lines. I can only imagine, you know, watching my son grow up to be the undisputed champion in two weight divisions and, and making a killing because this is, you know, it's prize fighting. It's about the prize you're getting, and this man is making millions of dollars, and it's because of Bill Haney and Team Haney in his corner. Yeah, incredible week, this for the zone. Incredible fight on Saturday. So much content coming your way on the zone, including this, which is on all platforms platforms right now. This is 40 Days. I beat down doubt and I just shove it to the ground. Just like when people say I'm not going to be a great boxer when I was coming up, I beat that doubt down. Every time I try to come up and say it's almost impossible to make it there, I beat that doubt down because I let go of the fear of it. <laughs> God rebuilds me and I get stronger. Time. Rather than break from boxing, he took the same approach in rings and out of them. Fight through. Anything. Even in his first defeat against Javante Tank Davis. Mentality was boxing is in a terrible place right now, and this is my moment to just do something about it. So I took everything they put on me got beaten down, got a separated rib in training, had everybody tell me I'm sh crying my eyes out because I can't lose the weight, get to the fight, I'm weak as f I know I'm gonna lose, I don't give a f this is my chance. And then, boom. Obviously I lost, but I felt peace. Everybody thought it would be sad, I felt peace. Because I felt like I did something for God. And then after that, I felt real spiritual strength. And I felt strong. And I felt nobody could touch me. Nobody's ever going to do that to me in negotiations ever again. Nobody's going to ever play me ever again. And now I'm coming different. Here we go. Come on. Yeah. When the going gets tough in the ring, I've been through it. Like when me and Devin get in the ring, and if it really does go down, we're both cut, I'm coming out there on top. There we go. Good. 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 This is the chance for me to try to establish myself as the king of boxing. And I'm going to sacrifice everything I have in that ring. This means more to me than anything I've done in my career so far. That's 40 Days that's available right now on the DAZN platform, also available on YouTube as well. Uh, by the way, look at this. This is Gleason's gym right now, and it's absolutely packed. But what I really, really like is that there are people here almost oblivious to the cameras, and they're just training and skipping and hitting the bag and jogging, and I, I absolutely love it. You see the QR code there. Make sure you scan that to be a part of what is going to be an incredible night on Saturday as Devin the Dream Haney goes through his workout. And, um, look, you know, looking at him here, he is huge, isn't he now? I just 
huge. been saying that Ade, when we're going to size him up, he's always had the, the body to fill out nicely. So he was a big 135 pounder. He's a big 140 pounder, and he has wide shoulders. And he does it in a muscular fashion. So we're talking about how great Ryan Garcia looks, looks like, you know, he's muscular. That's a muscular junior welterweight as well. Big for the weight division. He doesn't bring the power that Garcia uh, brings, but he brings a whole lot more to the table. Yeah, a little bit of underrated power, I think, at this stage. Look, he put Regis Progray down. That's not easy to do. Regis Progray is a big, strong, durable 140-pounder. Third round, he hit him with a clean right hand that put Regis on the deck, and he hurt him another time during that fight as well. And look, it's not always the power of the punch or the speed of the punch. It's the punch you don't see. And Devin's very good at landing those types of shots. Yeah, and what do you make about, sorry, Sergio, what do you make about the fact that he's going to rehydrate, as you said, probably to a super middleweight? I mean, he's going to come in over 160 pounds. Is that good or bad when fighters rehydrate to that much? Well, it depends how great in shape they are. Because when you're dehydrating to make a certain weight and you struggle to make that weight and you, you rehydrate 15, 16, or 20 plus pounds it works against you being that big but if you're in great shape when you're in great shape you don't really you don't really go past 10 pounds so i don't see devin haney going uh, over 10 pounds when he rehydrates tell the truth well, well, he did it against pro gray he came he in on the scales 20, 160. yeah oh, we'll see how he does in this fight i think he's going to come in big either way i don't know if we're going to get an opportunity to find out exactly how much he weighs uh, on fight night but i do think he's going to come in pretty heavy that's just who he was he came in heavy after he weighed in at 135 his body just pluses up look another guy at this gym Zerto Ramirez did the exact same thing when he was fighting at light heavyweight we go over 200 pounds at times for some fighters they do it Devin Haney has been able to get away with it I do agree with you Sergio it's not the healthiest thing in the world for guys to do that but to this point it's work for Devin Haney uh, the bookies obviously have him as a big favorite a very big favorite as well and you can understand why if they've seen obviously what Ryan Garcia has been like this week if if it had been a perfect Ryan Garcia in terms of preparation in terms of not the the stuff he said on social media how wide would Devin be there how big a favorite is Devin well let's play this out right you know Ryan Garcia back in 2021 defeated Luke Campbell yeah. right and that was kind of the bellwether moment for Ryan Garcia if he had fought Devin Haney months after that I think it would have been close to an even fight. Maybe you give Devin Haney a bit of an edge, but that was before Devin became undisputed champion at 135. That was before the close win over Lomachenko and the whitewashing of Regis Progre. So if that fight, this fight happened back then, close to even money, in my opinion. But so much has changed over the last three years to make those odds a lot different. Yeah, Sergio, we are looking at the odds earlier. How, how big a favorite do you have Devin going into this one? I, I think he's a really big favorite. Not only does he have the skill, not only does he have the confidence, he has the resume. I mean, if you compare both fighters resumes both champions res resume there's only one who actually fought former champions i mean credit to garcia he fought uh fortuna former champion there but that's it that's where it stops this is a man whose last seven fights have been champion after champion after champion from lenaris to jojo diaz to cambosis twice fighting him in his own home country to progress that is exactly what you want in a young fighter you want him fighting the best he's doing it passing the test and bit and whitewashing him he's actually dominating fighters that he's not supposed to be dominating at this early age that's what's impressive to he's me he's got to be very careful though in this fight not to get overly aggressive you just heard bill haney say we're going to stand in the middle of the ring say meet us there we'll fight any fight that you want to we have seen devin hurt at different times during his career he was hurt by Jorge Linares. I thought Jojo Diaz landed some clean shots on him. I thought Lomachenko, especially those left hands, landed some clean shots on him. Ryan Garcia has more power than all of those guys, including Jorge Linares, and they're going to come from angles that maybe Devin isn't quite used to. So yeah. he's going to have to be careful, Sergio, entering this fight. Well, Linares hurt him with the right hand, and uh, when, it, when it comes to fighting a guy like Ryan uh, uh, Devin Haney, you're going to need a right hand. We don't see that many right hands thrown by Ryan Garcia. He's a yeah, but Sergio, when I, when I see them, they're effective. I go back to his fight against Romero Duno. Romero Duno yeah. was on Dream Street when he hit with that first right hand. So that right hand, I think, is going to be a weapon for Ryan Garcia. So many fantastic attributes make up Devin Haney, Sergio. What's his best attribute? Jeff. That's easy. It's the jab. It's it's everything comes off that. But when he starts body punching, like he did against Lomachenko, without the body punching of Lomachenko, he wouldn't have won that fight. A lot of people think he still didn't win that fight. It was a it was a close fight against a great Hall of Famer in Lomachenko, but it was the body shots that was the difference. The thing about Ryan Garcia, he fights really uh, stiff. 
you know, not much upper body movement. So the body, the torso area is there. If Devin Haney comes out jabbing at the chest, jabbing at the body, you can bet he's going to be setting overhand rights, which Garcia is vulnerable to. Yeah, I think for Devin Haney, patience is going to be a key attribute here. I think Ryan Garcia is going to come out guns blazing in this fight. I think he's going to be looking to take Devin Haney's head off early on. But Devin... You know, look, he's effective through 12 rounds. Uh, Ryan Garcia coming into this fight, we know he's big, we know he's strong, but is he going to be as strong when you get into the second half of the fight? That's where I think Devin Haney has his biggest advantage. First half, Ryan Garcia can land something big, can do some damage on Devin Haney, but the second half, that's where Devin, I think, can take over. One thing we haven't really spoke about, and Bill Haney alluded to it, was um, Derek James. Obviously now his second fight. Uh, with Ryan Garcia. We were kind of all kind of had question marks about the Philly show and what he was trying to do in that fight against Oscar Duarte. But surely Derek James has a game plan to get the job done on Saturday. Look, it all sounds great. Yes, Derek James is a great trainer. Let's emphasize great. Okay, yes, he is one day we're going to be a Hall of Famer. But here's the thing. Ryan Garcia has already bounced from trainer, got another great trainer, from Goosen. Yeah. I mean, he was with uh, Eddie Reynoso, who trains, you know, pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world in Canelo. So the trainer can't get into the mind of Ryan Garcia. We heard plenty of times that discipline is a big issue with Ryan Garcia, following a game plan, that he does what he wants. These are all things Haney has no issues with, no matter what trainer he's with. And that's what you know, mental focus is all about with a fighter. Carrying a game plan and being disciplined to do it all the way to the end. Hey, make no mistake, this is a big fight for Derek James. I mean, he was trainer of the year a couple of years ago, had some great fighters in his stable. Several of those fighters have left him. Look, there are ebbs and flows in boxing. Freddie Roach isn't the greatest trainer of all time every single year. Manny Stewart had some down years. Right now, Derek James is kind of on a down tilt, right? Errol Spence lost, Jermel Charlo lost, Anthony Joshua stayed overseas. So it's a big chance for Derek James to put himself back on the map in terms of top trainer. By the way, I knew Devin Haney was coming because the swarm of people that were coming with him as well. Devin Haney is in the ring with us, the current WBC super lightweight champion. Devin, you are looking good, my man. Yes, sir. I feel great. Yeah. Well, what's this build up been like for you? We, we've tried to kind of work out What's it been like for us, seeing Ryan's tweets, Ryan's Insta stories? What's it been like for you? You're the guy that's fighting him. Um, it's been a it's been a different build up uh, than what we're all used to. Uh, it might be the first time we ever seen this type of build up, but it's boxing. What can you do? It's certainly been stranger than any build up I've ever seen. I mean, this week alone, we're only on Wednesday, and already you guys had a scuffle at the top of the Empire State Building, and for some reason, we're not allowed to throw the first pitch out at, uh, at City Field uh, in Chase Stadium. How much is that has that gotten to you? How much of that has bothered you, gotten under your skin, if anything? I mean, none of it. None of it uh, has gotten under my skin at the end of the day. I'm a true professional. When I get in that ring, I'm going to do my job no matter what, no matter how I feel or what, what he says. So uh, he can say what he want to say. Um, on, on Saturday night, I let my hands do the talking. You did give him a little bit of slap there the other day. What was He had it now? coming. He had it coming. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's been wanting to slap him, so I, I finally was able to do it for everybody else. Devin, this is the type of fight where it could be a fancy match between two fighters with great jabs. I, I always say it and praise that you have one of the best jabs in boxing, yeah. if not the best. Ryan Garcia has a fast jab, really powerful jab. This is the type of fight where if it does become a fancy match, do you think you can win that fancy match with a jab only? Yeah, I mean, Ryan, Ryan has, has speed, but I have the timing. So, um, you know, I just want to show how, how I'm levels above this guy. This guy is an average fighter with a name, you know, and, and, and that's just reality. At the end of the day, I'm a proven fighter, uh, proven champion. Uh, I, you know, I tested against the, the best fighters in the world, and I'm here for a reason, and it will show. Was you scared throughout the build-up that this fight might not happen? Was there any time you was thinking, one second, this fight could be called off? Um, in the very beginning, but then after a while, I knew that, you know, that, that this thing was going to go no matter what he did, no matter what antics he was going to do. Uh, the fight was going to happen, and that's been I've been ha tunnel vision. No matter who it was, it's, this fight is bigger than than Ryan Garcia for me. You know, it's I'm, it's me versus greatness, me versus myself, and you know I'm here for a reason of the the, the years and years of hard work and discipline and, and, and dedication. So this is just another fight for me. This is just another fight to show you know everything that I that, that 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 I've that I've you know worked on, everything that I've did to get to this point will show. There's a a lot of aggression right now coming out of Ryan to the point where he's talking about going after you right away from the opening bell. If that happens, what is your response going to be? I'll be ready. He'll run into something. Uh, to, I want him to come. Come on. Is that the kind of fight you want, a, a kind of a war in the middle of the ring? Tell him to come on. <laughs> I'll be waiting for him. That De won't be hard to find. Devin, I've followed your career for so many years, and, and I look at this, and I look at all the cameras and all your accolades and what you've done so far. This is incredible what you've done 
so far in your career, and you're, you're only 25. Yes. It is, it is insane, isn't it? I mean, we was going running I mean, through I some of the names you I can only thank Allah, alhamdulillah, because it's all a dream come true for me. You know, I dreamed to be here one day, and now the time has finally come. So, um, Allah is the greatest, you know. Allah is the greatest, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just so thankful. Um, He's, the, he's done this for me. And people were asking, we were talking about it, like, does Devin not like these kind of fight week responsibilities? My response was like, I think Devin's been kind of waiting for these opportunities because you kind of earned the accolades before some of the guys in and around your weight class did. You won the titles. You were jumping up in weight class, but you weren't getting the kind of coverage maybe that you deserve because that was like, this to me feels like stuff you've been waiting for for a long time. Yeah, no, it's been, it's, it's been a long time coming for me. Um, and, and now it's finally here. So, of course, I love I love everything. I love the build-up. I love all this. I lo all this is part of it. This is what I signed up for. And I've seen the, 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 the champions do it before me, and I knew that one day I would be here one day. So the time has finally come. Why not? Why, I'm, why not embrace it? I love it. All right, so Friday comes around. You'll make 140? Come on now. <laughs> I, I, I'm setting have it up. I, I'm setting it up have there. Have I ever missed weight? No, you have. That's what okay. I'm setting up there. I'm a true professional. Even when I was killing myself to make 135, uh, I still was making the weight. 140 is much easier for me to make, and uh, come Friday, it won't be no different. I will make the weight, and I will be strong, and stronger I, than ever. Right, and I, I believe that. How confident are you that Ryan will make 140? I think he'll make it. Really? He looks big, but I think he'll make it. How in some you? weird way, what do you think? In some weird way, you kind of you're gonna get a percentage of his purse if he doesn't make that weight. I think heavier, he's, it's gonna be a disadvantage for him. So. In a way, if he doesn't make weight, it's going to work in your favor. What do you mean heavier? What do you mean? Well, if he doesn't make weight, and then he gets penalized, yeah. you know, you get a piece of his purse. I think it would be a detriment for Ryan Garcia to come in heavier against you, personally. I think he'll make weight. I, I think he'll make, his weight. Uh, he'll make weight as well. Your dad was here, and your dad said you're chasing undisputed now at 140. Is that the goal now as well, 140 100%, undisputed? 100%. You know, I want to – I didn't want it at first, but right now it's my time, and I'm, I'm – I'm, I'm, it's, it's my moment, so it's like, why not fight the best fighters in the world, test myself, show the world how great I am, and uh, get it while it's hot. What changed for you there? Because like you said, at first, being undisputed 140 wasn't a priority. It was the biggest fights regardless of weight class. What made becoming undisputed in a second weight class more important for you? I'm just a competitor. You know, I want to be mentioned with the greats when it's all said and done, and uh, that's going to put me that, that, that much closer. Devin, good luck on Saturday, brother. Thank you. Good luck, Devin. Uh, big fight coming up for Devin on Saturday. Big fight for the zone. Big fights coming your way in the next few weeks as well. Hey, champ. I know why you're here. You're a born winner. The top dog. You have a proper punch on you. It only takes one, eh? But I know you're not all about throwing haymakers. You know your bobs from your weaves. And you know the zone's got over 100 live events every year. Over 100. Proper stack. All the action, the chaos, the comebacks, the non stop knockout. Big fights every week. So get those gloves back on. Together, we're boxing royalty. The zone. Undisputed. Undisputed is a perfect title for it as well. Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia live on the zone uh, this Saturday. Then, talking of Undisputed, the big one, Canelo versus Jaime Minguia Saturday, May the 4th. The first time Canelo is faking on a fellow Mexican since Julio Cesar Chavez. And then, we've been waiting for this one. On, off, on, off. It is on May 18th. Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk to determine who is the number one heavyweight on the planet. Absolutely incredible schedule. That's fantastic. It is. Uh, uh, and by the way, um, we could have had another column there as well for June 1st. You know, five versus five, a certain Dimitri Bivol versus Artur Baturbiev. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. That's probably one of the best shows I've seen on paper in a very long time. To have Deontay Wilder against Jay Li Zhang on the undercard. To have Crazy. Ray Ford against Nick Ball on the undercard. It all topped off by one of the best light heavyweight fights you can ever see at any time in boxing history. That's a heck of a card. Look who's here by the power of magic. Showtime Sean Porter is in the building. This is going to be impossible. I don't have an earpiece and you have an accent. <laughs> Done. No, we have an accent, Sergeant, Sean. We have an accent. He's the only one asking questions to me, okay? <laughs> Sean, how are you? I said, man, this is impossible. I don't know what he said to me. I'm great, man. Good, good to see you all day, man. Happy to be here. And uh, energy in here. Crazy. You've been in here for some media workouts before, I, right? I have before, but look, let me ask you something. 
we always uh, size up our opponents. What do you think about the two different demeanors in Ryan Garcia handling the media and Devin Haney handling the media? One was a little bit manic, the other one was a little bit composed. How would you take it as a fighter? Which one was was composed? Would you would you? Uh, Devin I'm Haney. Assuming it was Devin Haney. Devin yeah. Haney. Well, I mean, at this point, I think that Ryan has just he's created his own script, and he's got to follow that script. I think that script means being kind of crazed, mm. looking at looking at him like and he wants to now portray that to everybody i think really what he's trying to do is do something you know how normally a fighter tries to get into your head by saying things to you to get you outside yourself i think he's trying to think make people think that he's outside of his mind so that that causes you know, crazy that, as that, a fox huh you think ryan garcia is crazy as a fox? absolutely well if absolutely. that's the strategy then there's proof of success at least this point i mean devin haney instigated that altercation on top of the empire state building he yeah. slapped Ryan Garcia. So if his goal was to get under Devin Haney's skin, I think for right now on Wednesday of fight week, that is mission accomplished. Good point. It is, right? It is. So far, so good. This is crazy, isn't it? We're talking about Devin's rise. You've known Devin for so long. To see the amount of media here and to see him do it the organic way as well. This isn't an, you know, an Olympian that won Olympic gold medal, so he's had the red carpet rolled out for him. He's done it the hard way. So this is good. I love to see him get all the success because he's done it the hard way yeah i i, I actually i i didn't get it actually the hard way that he's taken to get here i didn't have it as as hard as him in terms of trying to do it all alone but i definitely had a harder road than a lot of guys i think my, sergio and i i think nope. we our stories are kind of similar in terms in terms of how we got to the top you're right to see somebody get to the top continue to work hard to continue to be hungry and again, like you said, come in here and be a complete professional. It shows you that he did it the right way. You know? All right, so what do you think Ryan Garcia's path to victory is here? Because Devin is a top 10 pound for pound guy, virtually unanimous on those pound for pound lists. I have been inside my top five at this point in his career. What do you think Ryan has to do to succeed against this guy? I think Ryan's going to try to do something that uh, not many fighters would even attempt to do or have the ability to do. Um, and, we'll, and we'll just keep it with Ryan and Devin, but I think Ryan's gonna try to match Devin speed for speed. Uh, we know that Devin has a high punch output. I think Ryan, we're gonna see Ryan with a high punch output as well. I think they're really, this could be that tit for tat kind of back and forth boxing match that they probably had a lot of in their amateur, a amateur days. And that's what I see coming from him. I think a lot of people are expecting Ryan to just wait, sit back and wait on a, on a heavy hook I don't think it's, I think it's going to be more to that. I think that's actually the path that he needs. I think he needs to be able to time Devin, get Devin off of his rhythm by punching with him, making him hesitate and things of that nature. So I, I think, think that, that, that that's where he got some I, success. You know what, Sean, I think Ryan Garcia is going to come out aggressive. It's, if history of how Ryan Garcia, you know, when he got dropped with Luke Campbell was early in the second round, I think, against Tank, he got dropped in the second round. It's because he starts off a little bit too aggressive, trying to prove a point, trying to be someone that he's not. Yeah. I think he's going to do that again against Devin Haney. Listen, he's so familiar with him. Yeah, yeah. I had him winning the first round against Tank Davis. You do. Right. And I said, you stay right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> you, you mm -hmm. stay right there. He comes out in the second round, and my jaw, I was like, what are you doing? I said, so, I, 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 said I don't know if you, I said, it's over. It's, I it's, it's, said it because we were watching it together. Yeah. I remember oh, we, were yeah. watching, we were watching it together, <laughs> yes. and that's exactly what he said. Look, that's the main event on Saturday. Let's kind of give you guys a quick reminder as to what we've got on the undercard, and it really is a fantastic undercard as well. Sergei Derevichenko versus Vaughn Alexander in a super middleweight division. Darius Fulgham, everyone very excited about this young man. He takes on Christian Olivas. Uh, Jonathan Canas takes on Angel Reyes. Amari Jones, again, another really good prospect, takes on Armel Mbumba Yasa. Uh, Kevin Newman II takes on Eric Robles. And Shamar Canal takes on Pedro Bogard. And then the main card, fantastic main card as well. Uh, Charles Conwell makes his eagerly awaited return to the ring. He takes on Nathaniel Gallimore, uh, John Scrappy Ramirez takes on David Jimenez. A lot of people think that could be fight of the night. Bector Melakuziev takes on Pierre Diombe. Uh, Arnold Barboza Jr., who was supposed to see today, unfortunately we didn't take some Sean McComb. And then the dream, Devin Haney defending his WBC super lightweight title takes on Ryan Garcia. It's a good card. It's a good card. It's a long night. That's what it is as well. That's what I saw there as well. I saw a long night as well. But it's a good card. Um, in terms of Fight of the night. What are we got? What are we thinking? Fight of the night. Scrappy Ramirez, David Jimenez. Yeah, I'm I agree. very excited about that 115-pound fight. Yeah. Fight of the night. 
Charles Conwell, baby. Cleveland's own, man. Cleveland's I'm excited own. to see him get back in the ring. I think David Jimenez has uh, something up his sleeve against Scrappy Ramirez. He brings the amateur pedigree. He brings the upsets. That's the one to watch. I'm kind of split here. I'm going to go Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia for the first six rounds. I think it's going to be crazy. You said undercard. I said, no, no, I didn't. I said, whatever you want to pick, basically. And I just chose what I want to pick. I'll pick the main event. All right, this kicks off a fight week. This is it. Tomorrow, we have a press conference. Then Friday, it's the weigh-in. Then Saturday, it's showtime. So make sure you stick with us. The whole team will be here as well. We're going to have a few special guests floating around as well. So make sure you stay locked into the zone because this is going to be, as you guys can probably tell, a very crazy week. Great fights with Amazon, no doubt. We need to fight. Hey, we're good fighters. Let's fight. Live on the Zone Worldwide, April 20th, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. These two have been going back and forth since the amateur days. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. Let's make the fight happen now. This one is going to be a grudge match. Set to ignite. Devin the Dream Haney, living the dream. Multiple world champion, undefeated. I am the man. It's time for me to show the world how great I really am. Ryan Garcia, lightning fast, explosive, unmissable, going all in. This is the year I shot the world. A world championship is on the line, but only one can wear the crown. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation. I'm telling you, it's special. This one Alice. Live on DAZN Worldwide, April 20th. You want some real fight? You can fight me.